Good morning. Slaves. What do you think about when I say that? Slaves. Maybe you're thinking um, 1862, the United States. By that time, there had been tens of thousands of slaves in the United States by 1862. 1862, the United States decided, we don't want this here anymore. Soon after that, President, President Abraham Lincoln, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, maybe I should have asked you to say that, and essentially set, setting the slaves free, yes? 1865, the Witch Amendment was passed. 13th Amendment was passed, very good. So, you would think, 150 years later, that's 150 years ago, by the way, 150 year anniversary of the 13th Amendment, that there would be no more slaves. Here we are, 2015, and there are still slaves. In fact, there's an estimated 30 million slaves worldwide. 30 million slaves in the world, and that is just estimating. Of course, you can't count everybody. And you're probably saying, well, certainly not here. I have traveled several places. I have worked. I have seen slaves. I have seen slaves working in Thailand. I have seen slaves working in India. And the sad part is that is that they're here too, even in our country, in the United States. You might be thinking, well, how can that be? What does that look like? I don't know that I've ever seen a slave, so there mustn't be any slaves. So what is slavery? What does it look like today? I have a friend who has come to start the conversation with us. And maybe some of you have already been aware of this a little bit. If you recognize this X on my hand, a few weeks ago, several of you were wearing this red X on your hand. You, I know that you want to know more about this. I know that you have heard something about it. So what can you do about it? I'm a high school student. I'm a teacher. I'm just one person. Can I do anything about that? Well, again, I would like to introduce my friend to you, and I hear you are standing on the, you are on the stage, yes? Um, this is Dr. Morgan, Dr. Sandra Morgan, who is coming to us all the way from California. She said, yes, I'll come to Wisconsin anyway, even though California is much better right now. Um, and she is the director of the Global Center for Women and Justice from Vanguard University in Southern California. This is her life. This is her passion. She speaks worldwide. She preaches. She teaches. This is what she does. This is her calling. So she's going to share with us today. So help me welcome Dr. Sandra Morgan. Very excited to be here today. Um, I teach Van at Vanguard, and I teach human trafficking and commercial sexual exploitation of children. I teach women's studies. I teach family violence. I host conferences. I have a student mobilization team, and um, we're going to put that slide up there. These are um, Vanguard students who want to do something to encourage the next generation to be safer online, to avoid becoming a victim of some kind of exploitation, to be part of a defense in their own community for more vulnerable kids. And so they go out into high schools and middle schools and present. And so I'm going to use their presentation today. But before I do that, um, I want you to get to know me. Because I'm looking at you, and you look just like the students in my classes. And my students do amazing things. One of my very first interns at Vanguard University was 19 years old when she decided I was her mentor. She did not ask. She decided, and she was in my office all the time. She became my intern. She traveled with me on a mission trip to Greece. Um, she is now one of the leading undercover agents for Homeland Security in Southern California, rescuing, investigating, so that we can prosecute the pimps that are taking advantage of people that are slaves for labor or for commercial sexual exploitation. So if you're a senior, stand up. So have you all got your college acceptance letters already? Yes. Okay, sit down. Juniors, stand up juniors. I'm looking for my students. Stand up juniors. Okay, you guys go online and find out why you should be at Vanguard. Sophomores, it's not too early to start planning. Freshmen. There are no freshmen in here. 
Okay, there you are. Yes. Come to Vanguard. And now, middle school. In middle school here? Woo! All right. Okay, this is like seventh and eighth grade, right? Yes. Okay, good. We have, we were the national something something basketball champions for Christian schools last year. Just saying. Okay. Um, so, the last song, Oh, How He Loves Me. How do you know that God loves you? In October of 2003, I have two daughters, one married, one was married, and one um, who's a, high, a school psychologist now. October 2003, my husband and I were serving as missionaries in Athens, Greece. And we, we had kind of began to sense that our daughter, who had two little babies, wasn't, something wasn't quite right. And we'd asked her to go get some counseling, and she did. And October 12th, 2003, my world turned upside down. When I got the call, 9,000 miles away from her in California, and she said, my counselor said that my silence is my prison. And she was in a very violent marriage. And we needed to go home and rescue her. We didn't know how to do that. We didn't even know how to begin. One of the ways that he controlled her is he told her, if you leave this, it will ruin your parents' missionary career. Now that's a piece of the puzzle for how he loves me. We, get, we went back in 2004. Um, I just am... Um, thrilled to tell you my daughter is thriving. She loves Jesus. My granddaughter is um, absolutely amazing. She loves Jesus. My grandson does that scooter skate thing where they flip and go, and he competes professionally now, 14 years old. He's amazing. And they both love Jesus. Coming back to the States was a great decision. It was hard for us, though, to give up missions. God called me to be a missionary when I was 19 years old, vacuuming the church I grew up in. So now then, fast forward a little bit, that was 2003, 2004, we went home. 2000, um, and we're at Vanguard University, my husband's missionary in residence, and then I start working with the Global Center for Women and Justice. And in 2007, October again, I got called to um, administration and they said, we're very, very sorry, but the economy has basically tanked, and um, your job is gone. So I wasn't feeling like God was loving me very much, but how does he love us? So what happened next was amazing. Within 24 hours, and I've been a volunteer with our Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force, so it was kind of a fledgling <laughs> coalition of people fighting human trafficking. They called and offered me, missionary nurse, pastor, I have a degree in religious education, I have a nursing degree. They offered me the job of being the administrator of the Federal Orange County Human Trafficking Task Force. Wow. Well, we needed to eat, so I, I eventually I said yes. It gave me, I was already bringing Vanguard students to the meetings as volunteers. We had a reputation in Washington, D.C. of doing the most outreach in the community of any other organization. In fact, when the Grant Monitor came to California, they said, how come Vanguard is producing 90% of your community outreach statistics and not getting any of the grant money? Huh, we got some grant money after that. So, how... God loves us may not look like Christmas Day with lots of gifts. It may look like moving when you didn't want to give up something. It may look like losing your job. But then spending three years learning how to work with law enforcement and federal attorneys, district attorneys. And, oh yeah, Last month, I was at the United Nations 
Remember the threat that kept my daughter in a violent, family violence situation? It'll ruin your parents' missionary career. There are 193 nations in the United Nations. And I got to do a workshop on human trafficking for the 53rd session of the Social Development Commission. Those of you who are interested in global reach, look that up. Um, Google it. So what did we do at Vanguard to begin to equip students to go out and do outreach is they have put together a PowerPoint. They study it. Global Center for Women and Justice has a mantra. Study the issues, be a voice, make a difference. If you don't study first, you may say the wrong thing and you may actually create harm. You may do something that puts someone at risk. Now, Vanguard students have been very well trained in all of this, but there are other Christian universities in our community, and I will never forget getting the call from the FBI when I was the administrator of the task force saying, you need to go to such and such a university and tell them that if their students are found going out into the brothels again, we will arrest them because they put our investigation at risk. Passion is wonderful but you have to study first and understand that it, it, we have to say the right things and do the right things and work with our community partners. So Live to Free has become the anti-trafficking school mobilization team. They go to all kinds of schools and they do this presentation where um, they teach what human trafficking is and I kind of get an idea that you guys understand that it is the illegal trade of human beings. People are being sold. And the use of force, fraud, and coercion are the methods. And I'll tell you, um, the force, fraud, and coercion, those are the legal elements of human trafficking. And if someone is over the age of 18, we have to prove that in order to put the bad guys in prison. So. One of the girls that I worked with in the Doctors of the World Shelter in Athens, Greece, had been lured to Greece when she was 17, had just graduated from high school. She was at the top of her class, valedictorian, and they offered her a job in Greece, and she took it. But when she got there, they sold her into a brothel. And then in the brothel, they, they brutalized her and then they kept her a slave because they said, you know that job application that you filled out? We have the address of your mother and your eight-year-old brother. And if you run away, we'll just go find them. So they used fraud to offer her a job that happens over and over and over again in labor trafficking. They also used force and then coercion. They threatened her family and she wanted her family to be safe. Oppressed, trapped, enslaved, and they are often children and young people no older than you. The first time I tried to go to a, a high school in Orange County, the principal said, oh, this is just too mature of a theme for our kids. No, you can't come. And it's like, well, it's not too mature for a seven or eight year old who's a slave catching fish or diving for shrimp, or a 10-year-old in Uzbekistan that is a slave on a cotton plantation so that we can have cheap t-shirts and they don't get an education, or an 11-year-old who can swing a machete and is harvesting cocoa beans on the west coast of Africa so you can eat cheap chocolate. Children are slaves. And when we look at children, I mean, we can look at the big picture, the 30 million slaves. But let's just think about kids just like you. Empathy, how do you begin to understand and make choices? The Live to Free tagline is just choices change lives. How can we begin to make choices right here in America that change lives. 
the, um, the idea of fair trade or supply chain audits. Talk to your economy teacher um, about what that means. The law of supply and demand. You're going to learn that eventually as you go through your college education. Supply and demand means that if somebody wants to purchase something and there's a big supply for it, then the price will go up, someone is going to start selling it. And then when there's no demand, the price goes down and then you can get it really cheap, right? Well, in human trafficking, it's a business and supply and demand is part of what drives it. So I can make choices to not be part of the demand. We think of human trafficking as being way over there someplace. But we have human trafficking right here in America. Please come to the town hall tonight. Please bring your friends. Come to the training tomorrow morning. Um, I know lots of you probably have sports and things on Saturday morning, but from 9 to 12, come and learn how to be the part of the body of Christ that partners together, we link arms to make a difference. And part of that is through our choices. And you can do your research and study, and then you know what to say and what to do. And that can be as simple as how you shop. We have labor trafficking victims in Wisconsin. Did you know they've had three cases just this year of labor trafficking? These are people who are work slaves. But there's labor trafficking at your local grocery store, at your department store, because of those children that I just told you about. And in fact, the Department of Labor produced a report and they showed 73 countries that import or export products to the United States that you buy. Now, in, um, in Isaiah 58, 6, it says not to oppress those who work for you. So we go back to that oppression. Isaiah 58, 6, and it's the response to what is the definition of true worship? Don't oppress those who work for you. So let's see, um, worship team, lead singer, where are you? Where are you? Stand up, come down here, I need some help. I just want to know, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I know you can take it because you were fabulous. Is she good? Give it up for fabulous success. Madison. Oh, I have two Madisons in my class this semester. Okay, so um, your shirt that you, you were wearing that's gorgeous, uh, did you make that? See, I, I love to ask people, how did you get it? And because you don't actually have any slaves at your house working for you. No slaves, okay. But how did you get that shirt? You got it from the store, okay. And how did you, you didn't take it out without paying, did you? No, okay. So you purchased it. And when you purchased it, did you just purchase the cotton and threads in it? You purchased the whole thing, it was all put together, so you purchased it from the time the cotton seed was put in the ground until it got here. So your payment covered all of the labor, the drivers, the person sewing this to get it to here, and even the labor in the store selling it to you, right? So when you think about that, and you think about the scriptures that says, don't oppress those who work for you. Do you realize that you purchased someone's labor when you bought that product? So your choices at the cash register are important. Thank you so much, Madison, for being so willing to do that. Yay. Our choices may seem very small, but when, and when I'm the only one doing it, I have to yell really loud to get any attention. Wear red, do something. But if I convince all of you to do it with me, do you think they're gonna start to pay attention? They are. In fact, I'm hoping Wisconsin will follow suit. California passed the Supply Chain 
Transparency Act. So I can go online and find out if a company is making sure that there are no slaves. See, that little girl in Uzbekistan, one of my missionary kid students, knew the children in the fields. That makes it really personal. She said they don't go to school. So then when they, they, they aren't working on the plantation anymore, they can't get a good job. And they get offered jobs where they literally are in debt bondage. And so even as an adult, they continue to be slaves. Um, it happens right here in America, too. This young lady was um, nine years old when she was brought to a very wealthy neighborhood in Orange County. The house where she was a slave is two and a half miles from my office at Vanguard University. $1.6 million home, she slept in the garage, took care of five children, did all of the cleaning and a lot of the cooking. And the only reason she was rescued is because a neighbor saw that a little girl at that house did not go to school. She was rescued. Now there is a number, and I'm going to have some people at the end pass out some cards, and I want you to um, put in your, in your cell phone the 888-3737-888 number, and then we, there's also a text number, it's be free, and the text is just be free, or 233-733. And in Wisconsin, those numbers have been used, and in this just this last year, 43 human trafficking cases were called in to that 888 number. Wouldn't you love to be the one who called that tip in? Because you saw something that didn't look right? You can do that. You can be the one to do that. When, when um, Shima, her name is Shima, was rescued, she didn't even know she was being rescued. She didn't speak English. And the traffickers had told her that if they find out you're here, they're going to put you in jail. And when they rescued her, they put her in the back of a black and white um, police car, and she thought she was going to go to prison for the rest of her life. She didn't even know she was being rescued. She didn't tell them anything about her story because she didn't understand what was going on. That's why it's important for us to know so that we know how to um, teach people in our community to reach out. Now, these are posters that you guys have for the forum. And I'm hoping that your groups will set up some, during spring break or summer, some community outreach. We did this in California. We took these around to medical clinics and gave them just a little handout and five minute speech. And within seven hours of the first time we did that, two victims were rescued. I didn't do it, my students did it. You can be part of this. And these are all free and the 888 number is there. Um, we can be more intentional about not purchasing slave made products and that means not getting to have as much chocolate because it costs $2 for the fair trade chocolate bar at Trader Joe's, the dark chocolate, $2. Fair trade organic at Trader Joe's is my favorite, if anybody wants to know. If you're coming to Vanguard and you're like, I want to make sure she gives me good grades, you can bring me a fair trade organic dark chocolate Trader Joe's bar. But it costs $2, not 79 cents. So we started thinking about that in terms of stewardship. And I decided that that $2 chocolate bar is cheaper because I'm all about not spending money that I don't need to spend. I'm a missionary. That $2 chocolate bar is actually a better purchase because it means that someone made sure that an adult, a parent, was getting paid a fair wage, their children were not slaves, and they're able to give their children an education and healthy meals. I can spend $2 on chocolate anytime. When the first trafficking in persons report showed the slaves on the cocoa plantations and said there were 284,000 slaves on cocoa plantations just on the west coast of Africa, that's not the only place where there are cocoa plantations. Overnight, I decided to make the choice that if I could not be sure 
that this was slave-free chocolate, I didn't get to eat it. So right away, that report came out, and the next thing, I'm someplace, and they've got one of my favorite kind of chocolate bars from a brand I'm not going to say because they still haven't come on board. And I had to say no. That's um, eight years ago now. And this is the one little piece that's very easy to validate because I know I can find chocolate that has been certified to be slave free. So that I make that my rule. I can't, I can't, I'm sure, I want you to know, legalism always results in hypocrisy. I am sure of the clothes that I'm wearing, even though I do due diligence and try my best, there are going to be things, parts of this, that I can't check. And some of the threads that I'm wearing were probably made by people with no options who were slaves. How can I, how can I make that different? But one of the things we want to teach students is how to equip people in their community, the, the, the high school kids and middle school kids, how to teach them the scenarios that might make them more vulnerable. Because 72% of human trafficking victims that are rescued in the U.S. right now are rescued from commercial sexual exploitation. And about a third of those are minors. That means they're under the age of 18. And the majority of those are runaways. One of the girls that um, I worked with, Anna was 14. Child Protective Services took her out of her home when her mother's boyfriend abused her. Now she was in a group home and she didn't like the group home. So she ran away, and one o'clock in the morning, she was offered a place to stay inside, and she thought that would be safer. But it was really someone who wanted to abuse her and sell her. So we teach kids the scenarios how to do that. We teach them um, that if you if you run away, there's a good chance someone is going to target you and make you feel safer with them. And so we want you to question them. My students get volunteers from the group to come up and they act out different scenarios. Um, one of the scenarios is, I know your family's having a hard time and we're gonna show you how to make an extra $100 a week and you won't even miss school. Another scenario is being recruited online. How many of you have had some kind of internet safety class? Excellent, your parents get a reward. And that one too, okay. I'm going to give you guys, I'm gonna give your counselors and stuff some great materials. Um, Net smarts, we don't have time today. But internet safety, 12 year old, only an hour from here, suburb in Chicago, last year met a guy in a chat room who told her she was beautiful and she could have a dream of being a model. He sent her an e-ticket to come to LA for a casting call. She, she got a taxi, he sent her a taxi too, to the Chicago O'Hare airport. She lived in the suburbs. Her parents were asleep when Los Angeles PD called them and said, we have your daughter. And they're like, no, no, she's in bed asleep. She, she believed him, and she went. And fortunately, she was rescued. And at the same time, because they got all the information off her smartphone, they rescued 17 other children that had been lured there by that guy. Internet safety, understanding internet predators, something to add to your um, scenario. Traveling sales crews. Kids are very vulnerable. This is the number three um, activity for human trafficking this last year for tips to the hotline and follow-up rescues. <coughs> Young people who take a summer job that sounds good and it turns out to be trafficking. Um, we're not going to have time to do this part. But I do want you to understand the signs. If you see someone working even in a restaurant or a hotel or in a, in a market, if they seem like they're not in control, 
if, if they don't seem to be able to tell you very much about their lives, they, they, the dates don't match up, if you see some of those red flags, which we're going to go over really well in the forum this weekend, um, you need to call what number? 888-3737-888. And we're going to pass these out as well. Um, God says that we are created in his image. And I, I want to close with an illustration where I need a little bit of help. I need to borrow 20 bucks from somebody. And who has 20 bucks? Bring it on down here real fast. Whoever gets here first. Oh, you guys are slow. Oh my goodness. I did this at, at the biggest boys high school in Los Angeles and I had 40 of them all in, thank you. Tell me your name. Casey, you're probably not going to want this back, but well, I look at her eyes. You just stay there. Okay, so so whose face is on this? <laughs> it's in small print at the bottom. Okay, this is Jackson. And we know this is a $20 bill because Jackson's face is on it, and it says $20. And if I hold it up to the light, I can see those little threads through here. And so um, how much, what can you buy with $20 these days? A couple of meals, a couple of shirts. Okay, so when I when I take this twenty dollar bill, what is the deal? Okay, so I scrunched it, and you know I really love it when it's been raining outside because you know I can stomp on this. Okay, and then um, okay, so you probably don't want this back now. It's really trashed, right? Say that again, really loud, so they can hear you. Why do you still want it back? I mean, it's it's like I destroyed it here. Um, how much is it worth now? Wait a minute. It's it's a mess. It's still worth twenty dollars. She wants this back. Do you think that anything you've been through? Anything you've been through is enough for God not to want you back. His image is stamped on your face. My time is up, and I would love you to take your $20 and um, have a few more friends um, pass out the stuff that I have here. And I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, I get a bunch of you. Um, this goes so fast and you guys are so amazing. If you want to find out more about Live to Free, these are some things you can do, documentaries, prayer, products, and this is how you can contact us. And we can do Skype training so you guys can do what they do. But I want to pray for you as we pass these out. Father God, this is the generation this is the generation that is bringing your justice in our own community, in our own nation, and globally. And I pray, Father, that how you love them will develop character. How you love them will, will create empathy. How you love them will equip them to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly. That the world can see a high definition image of your compassion and your love because you sent your son and in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Dr. Morgan, I want to thank you so much for coming all the way to Wisconsin and sharing with our chapter. And guys, before you go, there's going to be some stuff on the board regarding the run that's happening here this summer. It'll be the second annual Hope Run. And you also need to know that this afternoon, 
This evening and tomorrow morning, there is a great opportunity to hear more. So they're going to be passing out materials in the back as you guys leave out those three doors. And you guys have an opportunity to come back with your parents and hear more about this. This is just uh, an outstanding uh, message that we got today. So one more time before we leave, we could have a big hand clap for Dr. Morgan.